All right, so we're still talking about applying the definition of logarithms. And remember, like the most important thing to remember about a logarithm is that it's an exponent. Whenever you find a log of something, what you are getting is an exponent. Okay, so uh, let's evaluate a couple of these things. Okay, so logarithms are essentially exponents. So here is a way that we can evaluate a logarithm. If I wanted to find the log base 6 of 216, what I'm asking myself, so here's the first method over here on the left, just ask yourself 6 to what power equals 216? Well, 6 to the third power is equal to 216, so that means that the log base 6 of 216 has got to be equal to 3. Okay, well if you can't like think that in your head, just write something down rewrite that simple, simple statement, we'll set it equal to x, now rewrite it in exponential form. The base is going to be 6, exponent's going to be x, and then it is equal to 216. Now you have something to look at and go, oh yeah, obviously 6 to what power is equal to 216? Ah, 6 to the third power, so x is equal to 3. Okay. So let's try a couple of these, right? No calculator, and yes, of course, on your quiz, you're gonna have a couple of these, no calculator, trying to evaluate these logarithms. So the first one, I am asking myself, so log base three of 81, three to what power is equal to 81? Three to the third is 27, so this is three to the fourth. So x is equal to 4. All right. Number 2. The base is 1 fourth. So log base 1 fourth of 256. What's that equal to? So 100, uh, 1 fourth to what power equals 256? All right. So first of all, I'm taking a fraction, and it's getting way, way, way bigger. So, would you agree that this x value, whatever this exponent has to be, it's got to be negative, right? It's got to be negative so I can flip that 4 upside down. So, first of all, x has got to be negative. Okay, so now we're asking ourselves, 4 to what power is 256? That is equal to 4, right? 4 to the 4th power is 256, because 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 16, 256. Okay, number three. I'm asking myself 10 to the what power is equal to 0 0.001. Well, think of this as like X, um, scientific notation, right? This is kind of like this. This is 1 times 10 to the what power is equal to 0 0.001. So let me just move the decimal place over and see. One, two, three. X is equal to negative three. It's negative because it's getting smaller. Okay, one last one. I'm asking myself, 64, that's the base, log base 64 of two. 64 to what power is equal to two? Okay, so now I'm taking a big number and getting smaller. So that means that this thing is gonna be a fraction. Like maybe I'm taking the square root, maybe I'm taking the third root or the fourth root, something like that. Fourth root? That's exactly what it is. No? Let's see, it's not the fourth root because 2 to the, let's see, fourth power is equal to 16, so it's not that. I think it's the 2 to the 6th power? There we go. So that means that this is x is equal to 1 sixth. So uh, is 2 to the 6th power equal to 64? 2 to the 5th is 32 times 2 more? Yes, it is. So in other words, the 6th root of 64 has got to be equal to 2. Whew. I know you can do that without a calculator. It's going to take just a little bit of practice to get used to this whole new thing called a logarithm. Okay, so now there's two special logs, and these are the ones, these are the only ones really that your calculator has on. It's a log with a base 10, which is called the common log, that's on the left-hand side, and the log base E, 
which is the natural log, and that's over there on the right-hand side. So look at the one on the left-hand side, the common log. The common log is base 10, so log base 10 of A can be written as log with no little 10 on it of A. It's just the common notation for log. If you ever see log and it doesn't have a little base on it, you're assuming that the base is 10. Okay? So right underneath it in red, I'm taking the logarithmic form and turn it into an exponential. So the log of y is equal to x is equivalent to 10 is the base raised to the x power is equal to y. Okay, over on the right hand side we got our natural logs. Our natural log is base e. And so its notation is a little ln for natural log. So that's actually I think French and it goes logarithme naturel. Anyway, so yeah, so when you see ln, the base is E, the natural base. So down below in red, the natural log of Y is equal to X can be rewritten in exponential form as E to the X is equal to Y. Okay, so let's use our calculator to evaluate these two. So first I have to turn on my calculator because I forgot, just a sec. All right, I got the calculator. So here we go, here's the calculator. And uh, first of all, your two log keys on your calculator, you got the common log, which is base E, and that's just the L-O-G key. And then finally, you have the natural logarithm, which is right below it in capital letters L-N. So the first one, question number one, we want to find the natural log, no, nope, common log of 0.85, so log, it opens up parentheses, type in your 0.85, close those parentheses, and hit enter. So I get negative 0.07 blah 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 blah. So this is approximately equal to negative 0.07 dot 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 dot. What does that mean? Well, what that means is this is a, a base of 10, remember? It means 10 to the negative 0 0.07 something 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 power is equal to 0.85. Let me show you that in the calculator. Remember, the answer to a logarithm is an exponent, so I'll show you. So calling up the calculator again, type in 10, because that's the base, with the little caret key, and instead of typing that all in again, hit second answer. What number should I get as my answer? I should get 0.85, and I do. Okay, so let's look at number two, the natural log of 22. So that's right underneath the log key, natural log. Inside the parentheses, 22. Close those parentheses, enter 3.09. So this is approximately equal to 3.09. What does that mean? It means e to the 3.09 power, with all the decimals and stuff, is equal to 22. Back at that calculator, again, take e to the power, and inside the power, instead of typing that all again, second answer, and I get 22. Now, you don't have to do that last step. I'm just showing you, just demonstrating again the definition that the logarithm is giving me an exponent. So if I put that exponent back on the exponential, I get my answer back. Okay, so one more exercise, and it involves a tornado. So the wind speed, S, in miles per hour, near the center of a tornado can be modeled by, right there in the middle of the equation, S is equal to 93 log of D, so that's a common log, plus 65 where D is the distance in miles that the tornado travels. In 1925, apparently, tornado traveled 220 miles across three states. So we want to estimate the wind speed near the center of that tornado. And you might be shocked, it's, it's pretty fast. Okay, so this means that the speed is equal to 93 times the log of and uh, it traveled for 220 miles, so 220 plus 65. So let's 
call that calculator back up because there's no way you're not going to do that in your head. All right, so 93 log, and inside the parentheses, 220. Close them. It's essential that you close them there. Plus 65, and we get 280. Let's approximate that as 283 miles per hour. 283 mph or fast. That's really fast. I'm not sure I've ever done that fast. Maybe in a plane. Anyway, so that's the end of this one. The next one we're going to talk about finding the inverses of some exponential logarithmic equation.